Ben Lochlane from the Bow Group. He's a migrant specialist. We're talking about these ex extraordinary revelations in the Daily Express today. Uh, that basically the gendarmes, the special gendarmes, brought in uh, to patrol the northern French beaches to stop the boats uh, setting sail for Britain. They're doing nothing. They're just letting them go and crying about their sob stories and. Uh, uh, having quite a good time in Calais while they're at it, staying in a four-star hotel, uh, hitting the town every night. Uh, so they're having a good time, but they're not stopping the boats. Uh, so uh, now we're going to talk to uh, my next guest, political commentator Mike Buckley. Welcome, Mike. Hi there, how are you? I'm very well. Uh, what do you think uh, we uh, got for the f half a billion quid that Rishi Sunak gave... Monsieur Macron a few months back, allegedly to patrol the beaches to stop the migrants embarking on these dangerous crossings. Uh, and the Daily Express today, I'm, I'm sure you've seen it, is sort of revealing that these gendarmes are, are sort of basically waving the migrants goodbye, have a good time, and also they're having a good time uh, at our expense in a four-star hotel enjoying nights on the town in Calais. Not particularly ideal uh, from Rishi Sunak's point of view, is it? I mean, nothing is really a, a, a ideal for Rishi Sunak's point of view at the moment, is it? No. Pretty much, pretty, much, pretty much every day there's a new terrible news story about something else in this country that's collapsing because they've done nothing on nothing useful or lots of count, things counterproductive for the last 13 years or like with the concrete story, they knew about it and they hid it for a long time, hoping that someone else would have to deal with it later. But anyway, back to this story. Do you know what, I mean, Mike? First... You know what, Mike? You know, what's, what's kind of annoying about this situation politically is that even people like you and I have to agree with all this. So we're on the same page here. Please carry on. <laughs> agree, isn't it? Yeah. But anyway, we'll... we'll it's we'll it's infuriating, it. but you're right. <laughs> yeah, well, you're good. I'm glad about that. <laughs> I'll, I'll both But thanks for the backhanded compliment. Um, on this one, I mean, The Express is not a publication that I would normally trust particularly, so assuming the story Yeah, but is this rare, is fair enough. This is a good investigation. I mean, they've got, a photo. Fair. Got a, they've got a photo. Let's go with that, fine. You don't I trust mean, The I'm Express because it's right wing, is that it? <laughs> But, uh, <laughs> we digress. I'm Carry not, on. I'm not a regular reader. But yeah. I'm not a regular reader. Let's go with that. Yeah. Um, but nonetheless, you're right, they deal with a photo. I mean, I'm not here to defend the French police. And I, I can't say I've been over there and talked to French police or scoured the coast with them to see whether they're working really hard or whether they're not. I think what I would say in their defence is that the French coast is really long. And how fair enough, four hundred eighty million pounds is a lot of British taxpayers' money. Yeah. We do need to be make to make sure that that money is being well spent. And I would hope that the government has systems in place to where they get decent reports from the French police and from the French government to know whether that's the case or not. And if not, the question is why not? You know. Um, but the coast is long. Of course, there are boats that are going to get through that will not be picked up by the French police. You can't employ enough French police to like cover the whole yeah, coast. Yeah, I get that. That's fair enough, yeah. I mean, it is fair enough, and that's just logic, right? But hopefully, they would be able to prove that they would have stopped some boats leaving and that they would have been able to direct those migrants towards claiming asylum in France <laughs> or... Or I was going to say, or to a safe and legal route to get to the UK, but unfortunately, this government won't put any safe and legal routes in place. So coming across on a small boat is the only way. I mean, I would imagine, sadly, that the French police will find people, they will turn them away, they will confiscate their boats, and then the migrants will just try again the next day in a different boat. You know, I would imagine that that's what's happening. But, but, but... So it will be it'll be a game of cat and mouse. Well, with Ben Lockley from the Bow Group, I just put to him that. The charge I would make against Rishi Sunak in terms of this huge amount of British taxpayers' money he gave to Monsieur Macron is uh, political naivety. You know, let's not beat about the bush. Uh, for Macron to stop every migrant leaving France is a vote loser for him. Uh, he doesn't actually essentially want to stop them. And soon after this de deal was made, uh, two gendarmes on the northern French beaches, assuming that this was now their mission, to actually stop the boats, were fo got themselves photographed, puncturing two dinghies. Subsequently to that, they were severely reprimanded. So Sunak should not have given Macron half a billion quid because he knows that Macron doesn't really want to stop the migrants. I'm not sure that's true. And I think the British government and the French government, I, I, I would imagine, both want to stop the boat simply on grounds of safety. It's not safe for people to be crossing the channel this way. We need a better system in place where people are, are allowed to claim asylum for the UK in France 
if they've got some reason to do so rather than claiming in France. And then the UK government should make an initial assessment. If it's deemed that this person is likely to have a plane in the UK, they should be put on a ferry or a train or a plane like anybody else. That That is that is the right, that is the humane thing to do. And I would imagine that both the French government, uh, what I say, I would put imagine... On a, so hang on a second. So if they try to get across on a, uh, a dinghy and they mm -hmm. get stopped, we put them on a ferry. I don't think that's a very good system. If, if they're coming anyway... No, 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 Mike. We don't put them on a ferry. We don't want them to come mm. here. They're not legal. They're illegal. Some of them. They're not... It's not... It it's is not, illegal. It's illegal. illegal. You can't it's come across it. the channel in illegal vessels. It is not illegal. It is illegal. It is illegal. Right. We choose, right. we choose for it right. not to be illegal. But it, it is, is illegal. illegal. Am I, I'm sorry, hang on a second, Mike. I'm with Ben Lockley. I, I'm right, aren't I? This it's absolutely illegal, and that's why the two people they arrested the other yeah. day, finally, after years of this going on, they had the grounds to arrest them because they were arrested on the grounds of illegally entering the country. Yeah. The only reason they haven't arrested the, the, all the other ones that they yeah. uh, come in, well, there's two reasons. Firstly, you just don't have enough space to deal yeah, with that many people. Yeah, that's what it is. You yeah. don't have the capacity. There's too many of them. Yeah. Prisons are already full. Um, but secondly, I just don't think they care. They don't want to be the nasty party. They don't want to be seen yeah, as privilege. arresting these people. So it's only in very extreme circumstances they'll use the power they have. But it's absolutely illegal. They absolutely do have the power to arrest these people. It is against yeah. the law. But so it, say it's not legal, it's a, it's a complete falsehood. But in fairness to what Mike's saying, I mean, the practicalities of it, because yeah. of the sheer numbers, they can't arrest every single exactly. one and say, you are going to Canterbury Crown Court, charged yeah. with illegally entering this country, because they can't put a thousand a week into the dock. Yeah. So that it's a pragmatic approach that we decide that uh, we're not going to charge them with these offences. Uh, but that notwithstanding, were you, Ben, you were in northern France recently. You saw these uh, dinghies sort of weaving among the beach, the yeah. holiday makers, and making their way to the sea. Well, actually, right? when I was on the way out of Dover, I saw them being brought in just from the ferry. I could see the boats coming in. It was like, you, you can't <laughs> move for them. They're everywhere. And then when I landed <coughs> in Calais, you're, you're walking through Calais, and that these you know young blokes are walking through the streets. You know, you can mm. tell they're all basically in a queue lining up to mm. jump in boats to come over. I mean, it's like a holding pen at the moment. Um, it's become a, 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 you know, a key point of traffic for people. Yeah, yeah. It's very clear that they're going into Calais in order to go onto the UK. Of course so. The idea that you set up safe and legal routes, all that would do is bring more people into Calais to try and come to the UK. It would make the problem a lot worse. Absolutely. Uh, last word to you, Mike. Uh, I've been shouting you down and all that, but uh, what would you do, or what do you think uh, that Rishi Sunak should do uh, if you were Rishi Sunak, and the mind boggles, but if you were, what would you do to try to solve this crisis right now? What would be your first step? Well, firstly, on the legal front, I mean, you're right, it's legal to cross the channel in a boat that is unsanctioned. If for any reason... There you go, then. That, that's that, then. Move on. Than, if you let me finish, claiming asylum. If you get off the other end... No, 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 that's, no, not, no. True. Really? that's not true. Hey, not true that's not true. That's not true. It's absolutely away, not true. It's, it's what you direct... choose to believe. It's not true. It is true. It Don't isn't. It's interpretive. Way, it's on. interpretive. Do a favour. Go and read the Refugee Convention. That I have read it, to. and it says that uh, an asylum seeker Find should claim it. asylum in the first safe country they anyway. reach. Yeah, yeah, yeah. After they that, should claim asylum, asylum in the first safe country That's they reach. That's in the text of the convention. Much. It very much does not say It does that. say that. I think you should go back and read no, it again, because it says it in black and white. Go and read it. I used to work on refugee policy. That is a common fact. So did I. It's not actually true. I read it. Well, no, no, you, you know, this is ridiculous. It, you cannot cross the channel in an illegal vessel. You cannot arrive here with any document, without any documents, because that is illegal. It's not. If it, it I mean, is. It's completely illegal. <laughs> completely illegal. Ben, that's, like, that's, like, that's like saying it's not illegal to, to rob a bank. Is, but well, it's not government. anymore. Yeah. <laughs> if it was illegal, they would get arrested, but they no, don't. No, they wouldn't. there's too many yeah, of they them. Wouldn't. The good they should be arrested, but really they're not. not. Anyway, you asked me what I would do. If go I on. Yeah, sorry, Mike. Go on. I would, it's fine. I would process claims. We've got 180,000 people backed up, costing us 7 million a day on hotel costs. Yep. The government need to employ some case handlers, in, process those claims. Three quarters of them are genuine, based on what normally happens. They can then go and get jobs, contribute to society, fix some of our post-Brexit labour shortages. That makes us all better off. Can I just clarify? Fair, 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 fair enough, fair enough, Mike. Uh, we certainly should start processing.